All right, so what an absolutely gorgeous morning it is. Um, I'm gonna go out and uh, mill up some pine this morning. Um, got a couple chains with me. I wanted to pick out, um, wanted to pick up a few more chains for my saw shop, but uh, they're out of the boxed ripping chain that I want. And so I'm gonna run with what I have and just kind of see how far I get. And then <clears throat> the nice thing is, my saw shop is kind of halfway in between me and the place I'm going. Um, got two and a half gallons of uh, 93 here. I think I'm gonna run this 32 to one. Man, I should have got this. <laughs> I should have got this a long time ago. I saw it at Walmart for like a buck 50. Um, so we're gonna run 32 to one. Um, this is, man, this takes all the guesswork out of it. 32 to one. You know, we've got uh, gallons here, liters here. I'm gonna be going two and a half. So I'm gonna fill it up to there. Running this Castrol Go, Buck and Billy Ray's finest. Um, did a whole bunch of research on what kind of two-stroke oil to use. Um, and uh, even got into the paramotor forums and turns out just this stuff. You know, there's like a Mew tool, I think it's called. It sounds like a Pokemon. Um, <clears throat> can't remember what it's called. But uh, that stuff's like 26 bucks a, a liter. This is seven. And I can get this at uh, O'Reilly Auto. Oh, well, you know what? Probably should have shaken that up. <laughs> there we go. All right, we're going to run 32 to 1. From... Golly, I mean, honestly, it smells like, I got a cold right now, but this smells like you could put it in your coffee, quite honestly. It's one of the things I really like about it. Um, I try to use less and less caustic, nasty chemicals every year, <clears throat> especially if there's a... Uh, a good replacement for it um, yeah Castro go this is good stuff so we'll put that here um, I've got my uh, 661 CM I've got uh, my bar oil I've got my board my milling board I've got my CS590, got my Picaroon. Um, this is a uh, council tool. This is a three and a half pound head on a handle that I carved and I love it because it's it's punchy. It's, uh, it's a heavy head with a short handle, white oak handle. I love this. I love this, uh, this Dayton head um, in a sheath that I just threw together for it. Um, I didn't get this design quite right on the sheath um, I cut this sharp. I wanted to kind of, anyways, I screwed it up. I'm going to do another one at some point. Um, and then I've got, uh, this is that Michigan pattern. Um, and I'm just testing it. You know, I'm just putting, putting it through its paces. I'm bringing two axes because, you know, I haven't swung this one real hard and the handle wasn't totally, uh, seasoned when I, when I hung it. And so I'm bringing two axes just in case I have problems with that one.
right, so here's my first cut, and uh, I will tell you, <laughs> um, this was a rough first cut of the day. Uh, this did not go as well as I wanted it to. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I, uh, I put my screws just a little bit too high, and I thought, let's just see how that's gonna work, and it didn't work, of course. And I know it wasn't gonna work, I was just hoping I'd get lucky. <laughs> and uh, my chain is just, I milled with it yesterday, I was milling oak, but I only did four cuts, and I thought switching to pine will be okay, but it's not okay. Um, but uh, this, is a, this is a decent size chunk of pine here, and uh, I've got all of these over here, and then if you look in the back, I've got all of those over there. So I am gonna take the time to sharpen my chain here. Um, otherwise, it's gonna be a very long day. Woo, and a hot muffler. my cuts aren't going as well as I want them to quite honestly um, I mean it's it's not bad for a chainsaw mill cut um, but uh, I'm really not happy with that chain um, I'm running a crosscut chain right now because it's the one that I had ready to go and it's not as ready to go as I thought it was you know I think I mentioned I milled with it yesterday and I didn't think it got as dull as it did um, so I think what I'm gonna do, I'm going to set this to the side and uh, go to my chainsaw place and grab a couple extra chains. All right, so this is my least favorite part of milling right here is the, uh, the setup and the tear down. Um, I'm gonna change the chain out um, and it's gonna cut just a heck of a lot better after doing that. This is just not, not cutting it. Milling with a dull chain is about, uh, is about the worst thing I can, <laughs> I can think of doing. All right. And I would, uh, I would never mill without one of these combo wrenches. Um, you know, it's got, uh, 7 16 half, 3 8 and quarter, I believe. No, 5 16 3 8 and quarter wouldn't make any sense. Get all that junk out of there. Look at that. Now I suppose this chain's gonna be all um, tangled up. Oh. Is it? It is, okay, no problem. All right, let's see what we're dealing with. We want, uh, we want to get rid of this one. Outside, outside, no, we got it inside.
Oh, nice wood.
uh, yeah, check that out. We've got five slabs. Those are about five and a half foot long, five inches thick. Uh, and they are very, very wide for pine. Um, I mean, you're talking about, uh, you know, that's, that's 18 and a half on the skinny end. And you know, that's just about 19 on the other end. Uh, it's going just beautifully. Um, it's a wonderful day. The rain's holding off. It's nice and cool. Um, my saw's running well. I'm just feeling great today. So I'm letting it cool down and then we'll get back to it. Um, now I've got all this here that I can mill. Uh, and this is just a little bit short of what you'd want for construction timber or building materials. Yeah, you know, it's about five and a half feet. Um, but it is wide. It is really, really wide. Look at that. That's 22 inches wide. Um, just amazing. And it uh, looks like there might even be some wider ones back there. So we'll, we'll get back to it. I'm letting my saw cool down. Nice and controlled. That was dumb and you might be right um but uh i've actually got a pretty pretty good sense of what that what that log weighs and where it wants to move um and believe it or not with a cant hook on it um that log wasn't that difficult to move um i mean i could hold it in place with one arm while i scooted it around the side that's what's nice about working with pine too you know um, that was very much within my comfort level um and I stopped it with my foot. I got steel-toed boots on. Um, you know, this log probably weighs 700 pounds, would be my guess, six, 700 pounds. Um, so, I mean, in the grand scheme of things for logs, it's not that heavy. So I have some choices here. Um, basically, the widest boards that I'm gonna get are right here. But I think the best boards that I'm going to get are right here. Um, man, I'm really not sure how I'm going to mill this yet. Um, Some really nice um, some really nice lumber I love vertical grain pine um, I really do people like vertical grain fur for the same reason uh,
that out. I mean, um, pine is beautiful. It has a, a rich golden color to it um, when it's big, um, when it's mature. I mean, this is absolutely phenomenal. Um, cutting these five inch thick. Look at this, this vertical grain here. So, so tight. Um, yeah, this is coming out. I mean, honestly, even, even better than I hoped it would. So I'm gonna get one more cut in and then I'm gonna start loading into the truck. So here's the result of a morning's work milling. We got seven slabs. These are all between 17 and 22 inches wide, all of them five inches thick. Uh, I had problems with this one right here. Um, everything else turned out almost dead flat. Very little need for evening out for planing. Um, but uh, about 11.30, I'm usually done milling. I got out there about 7.30. Um, I do not mill in the afternoon sun. Not so much for me, but uh, for the sake of my chainsaw. It just doesn't work that well. Um, so I'm gonna get these unloaded and stickered. Um, I'm not going to coat the ends of them. I don't usually coat the ends of pine. There's enough resin in there and the wood is soft enough that I don't really find that there's a need for it. But uh, we'll give these some time. If I have a project for them, I'll kiln dry them. Otherwise, I'll just uh, warehouse them and let them air dry. So thanks for watching. <laughs>